on today's YouTube video, we're talking all things early season whitetail gear. Some of my thoughts, some of my top picks. So to get things started, <clears throat> I think we are a little gear crazy at times. I think there is a perspective lost that has translated from the elk woods or the mountains to the whitetail guy. The whitetail guy is generally 20 to 60 minutes from his truck and civilization. Uh, most uh, uh, of the uh, of the whitetail guys, maybe the guys out in Appalachia who are packing in super deep in the mountains, sure, they, they need to mirror a little bit more of that system. But th there was a time not too long ago, I was running around the woods in military BDUs and you know, honestly, I was doing just fine as far as seeing deer and getting on deer in, in kind of the public lands of Ohio. Looking at some of my gear items over the last couple years, some of the more budget-friendly options I've been a bigger fan of, and other times I feel like I gotta spend just a little bit more. Um, and then there's the hoodie craze that's going on that I don't understand. But let's talk base layers. And many of the base layers from First Light, Sitka, Kuyu, you, you name the brand, they're anywhere between 80 to roughly $120. I literally just looked at prices before making this video. And I'll be honest, I think I've shot my biggest buck in a base layer from Costco that cost, I think, $7. Um, I think I just needed to do to, to the day, but again, a $7 base layer. Um, now, I will say this, I, I bought a Black Ovis one that's like $40 to $45 when you can scoop them up on Camo Fire, and that's about half the price. And I do think there is a better quality in the first light base layers, but like the first light's double the price and I don't think it's double the quality. So if a guy's looking to pinch pennies, I'm gonna put my black seal of approval on the, the black Ovis when you can find them on camo fire at the discounted rate. Uh, moving on, I would say socks might be more important than base layers. But again, if you look like at October bow hunts, which this video is geared around, you can get by most of your early October hunts with just your average pair of like crew socks that at least come up, you know, kind of uh, in your mid calf area, just so you don't get some heel blisters with your boots. The, the socks I personally like are the Altera brand and their lighter sock is a, is a great sock to do everything from hiking, scouting, and then I use their midweight kind of into November and late season. Early season approach as far as layers are concerned. Generally, I'm walking into the woods with one shirt and just a jacket because of that final temp drop, especially in those evening hunts or maybe sitting there in the dark for a bit on a morning hunt. I don't generally have a lot of things like I do for the rut. A lot of uh, these companies, one, are going to hoodies. And hoodies are cool. Don't get me wrong, I think hoodies are cool too, but like from a hunting functionality, I don't think they're as versatile. Sitka, First Light, they both like kind of targeted the hoodie as that October, put it on the last 10 minutes when the tent drops. Uh, obviously late October, you can get some really chilly temps here in the Midwest, but like a hoodie doesn't like layer as well as you got to put it over your head. What if you're up in the tree and you got your harness on? So I am a big proponent, especially if maybe a guy watching this video is just getting into bow hunting, is get you that October bow hunting jacket. But kind of that piece that'll zip, full zip. I do like some zip pockets so you can kind of store stuff in them um, and kind of be a little more secure because you can zip them up. That may allow you to go to a smaller bag too if you can shove a few gear items in, in some pockets and then zip them up for security purposes. I will say, there is a gear item and there's budget options out there that are a must and that is pants. You gotta have some stretch pants. Uh, recently I did a turkey hunt in the spring where I had some old BDUs and went to step over a log and I was like, hmm, I definitely noticed the no stretch in these pants. And uh, the, the nice thing is nowadays, uh, you can get into stretch, uh, the Wranglers are, are a very common item as far as a stretch pan. I have two options here that I, I really like. This is more of a mid-weight uh, layer. This is a ridge cut, ridge cut, and you can find these at Tractor Supply. This is my favorite winter scouting pan, but as far as bow hunts, like into that mid-October, these are great. They're earth tone, they stretch. Now, these are a Costco special, these are Eddie Bauer. The negative, uh, and you gotta watch this when you get into the hiker pants, they're a little bit noisier as far as like the swooshy factor is concerned. You know, I, I'm a big proponent in, in fabrics that are quiet. And actually, you know what? Let's get to some of my favorite uh, bow hunting pieces. So I'm gonna wash my clothes today. I do that about mm, twice a year. Uh, really big on scent control, clearly. But I thought I'd go over some of my favorite like early to mid October pieces here in the lineup. 
I got a variety of camos and uh, solids, uh, base layers, and you know, a lot of these items actually are pretty budget friendly and, and just good pieces that I believe in, honestly. Things out, I got the, the Black Ovis Merino, like 150 weight, it's pretty solid. I've had that for like six, seven years. I do have a 230 weight Badlands wool piece that I actually like more in the later season, uh, but I like how loose that fits and uh, it's been a pretty good option. I have a Nomad um, piece here. This is a Dural wool. I actually like the real skinny uh, hood on this guy and it, it really doesn't like impede your vision, but I like this for driving the truck like in those cold mornings when you want just a little something and uh, you can throw that hood up as you're driving. I've got some Predator pieces. Predator is probably one of my favorite camo patterns of all time. The uh, the G2 suit is a uh, very soft, um, silent fabric, a little bit longer tapered in the back so you don't have the wind come up your backside. Uh, it's a very good uh, basic piece. Hey, this is a very good utility jacket from like oh, mid-October into the earlier half of November. Uh, zip pockets, uh, a little bit of wind stopper thicker, um, Kind of layering it's, it's probably double a hoodie weight is a good way to describe it take a take a thicker hoodie it's a little bit heavier than that uh this is a a technical piece from predator it's got um it's got zips down the side this is the high plane series um you can see this is in their spring green deception guy uh the hood's good on this this has got a little more wind stop in it and does a pretty good job as far as even though it's got a lot of wind stopper, it's not super loud. I really like this piece if it's spitting rain and kind of drizzly out because um, it's like water resistant. So I'll go ahead and do that tonight. Uh, I really like this bottomland pattern, honestly. Um, not if I'm like starting to get elevated, no leaves, it's a little dark. But early season, this is like a decent like hoodie zip up piece. Uh, I never know when I'm gonna wear this, but it's just a good overall um, kind of piece. I will take the G2 over this for sure. I just like that pattern. I like that piece as far as versatility. Uh, I got a couple thin neck ga uh, gaiters. One's wool, one's not. Uh, a couple thin gloves. Always cut the fingertips off because you, you don't want fingered gloves, I feel like. These were a new pick uh, last season. Uh, these are the minus 33 wool gloves and I really like the weight of these. They're thicker than the first light wool gloves and they're a touch warmer. They're actually a really good quality product. I, I definitely, this gets a gold stamp of approval. Um, other than that, I'll, I'll do some more washing of clothes probably in the second half of October, kind of getting ready for the run. But this is what I got going on right now.